All right, I had a uh, subscriber asking me to do a video about what the differences are in the chains. So up on the bench today, I've got uh, a bunch of different chains here and chain tools as well. I'm gonna go into uh, what the different chain sizes are, what the different chain styles are, and uh, all that. Let's uh, start with the basics. There's going to be three basic measurements you're gonna to need to know if you're looking to buy a new chain. The first one is going to be the chain pitch. The chain pitch is a numeric value that's given it's actually a measurement. You take the distance between any three rivets in the chain and you divide that by two. Generally, you're going to see real small chain at quarter inch pitch. Uh, you'll see 0.325 pitch, 3 8 pitch, uh, 404 pitch, and uh, you actually, the harvester chain can get even uh, larger than that. The second is going to be the chain gauge. What the gauge is, is the width of the drive link. So it's actually the drive link that goes into the bar. The bar gauge and the chain gauge must be the same size or else it's just not going to work. And the last one is going to be the length of the chain. And chains are measured in drive links. So uh, I have here a chain for uh, my trim saw, this is a 55 drive link chain. If you have a, uh, that's a 16 inch bar. If you have a 14 inch bar, it'll be less. A uh, 12 inch bar, it'll be less than that. So you're going to need to know how many drive links your chain needs. So let's look at some of the uh, more common chains and chain styles, yeah? Right, some of the basic terms you need to know to uh, understand chains. Parts of the chain, this is the cutter. So that's what's actually going to do the cutting. The top of it is known as the top plate. Right here is known as the depth gauge. You set that, that's what's going to determine how much of the wood is cut away. So you can see that the cutters are actually angled back. So as you file it and sharpen it, it actually gets shorter and shorter. So occasionally you do need to take down the depth gauge. In between the cutters, this link right here is called a tie strap. Underneath, this is going to be a drive link. All right, here we have two chains for my uh, 661. They are both the same gauge, pitch, and drive link count. The differences are that the top chain here is a full chisel chain, and the bottom chain here is a semi chisel chain. Now, what they're talking about in relation to full chisel or semi chisel is the geometry of the top plate. So, on a full chisel chain, is this it is a 90 degree corner on the top of the top plate. This chain cuts a bit faster than semi chisel, but also dulls a bit faster as well. On a semi-chisel, you have a rounded top plate right here. So this is going to stay sharp longer, it's better in dirty conditions, requires less filing, just cuts a little bit slower, but not significantly. Here's a head-on view of a full chisel chain. You can see right here, that's a square corner, 90 degrees. That's a full chisel. And here we have a head-on view of a semi-chisel chain. So you can see right here, this corner is rounded. Another difference in chain types is going to be the ground, which is just how it is sharpened. So again, I have two chains that go to my 661, same pitch, gauge, and drive link count. This top is round ground, this bottom is square ground. 99% of you are not going to be doing anything with square ground chain. Uh, most of what you're going to see is round ground. Basically all that's saying is to sharpen, this gullet here is going to take a round file. On the square ground chain, the gullet uses a special beveled file. It is much more difficult to sharpen, but it also cuts much faster, uh, roughly 10 to 15 percent. Drawback, in addition to the more difficult to sharpen, is that it also dulls much faster. So if you're in any kind of dirty wood or abrasive, it's going to dull pretty quickly. So most of what you're going to be working with is round ground. Uh, generally, this is kind of a uh, logger chain. The only reason I even have one is because uh, I special ordered one just for a video I'm doing in, well, this video. All right, in this close-up of the round ground, you can clearly see the sharpening file used is a circle as it creates a round profile. In the close-up of the square ground, you can clearly see it has straight lines. Basic tools for sharpening these chains. The round ground is a round file, and the square ground is a special beveled file. Another difference in your saw chain types is going to be the profile. Both of these chains are 3 8 pitch, but you can clearly see that this bottom chain is quite a bit larger than this top chain. This is just, bottom chain is going to be your standard profile. 
The top chain is going to be what they call low pro, low profile, uh, or Pico. This is a chain for my trim saw, a 16 inch chain, 55 drive link. This is a chain for my 661, 114 drive links. So even though they're the same pitch, they are not interchangeable. Another difference in your saw chain is going to be standard versus low kickback or safety chain. Here we have your standard chain. Here we have a low kickback chain. If look at the drive link on the standard chain. There's nothing on top. If you look at the drive link on the safety chain, there is an additional hump there. What that does is as this chain goes over the top of the bar and bends, that separate hump will separate from the depth gauge and create a taller profile going around the nose of the bar. So while you're cutting, if you hit something with your nose, a nail, a piece of embedded barbed wire or something, your chain, instead of getting caught with the cutter head and kickbacking, hopefully not into your face, will bounce off. It'll still you know, bounce on kick on you, but it's not going to go flying at you. And there is no difference in cutting speeds on these chains. It is simply going around the nose of the bar. Another difference is going to be the complement. This is a full complement chain, meaning it goes cutter head, tie strap, cutter head, tie strap, cutter head, tie strap, all the way up. You can also have a skip tooth chain or a semi skip tooth chain. I don't have one uh, to show, I'll put a picture up, but it'll, a semi skip will be cutter head, tie strap, cutter head, tie strap, tie strap, cutter head. And a full skip tooth will have two tie straps in between each cutter head. These generally are for more powerful saws going through larger wood with uh, you know, bigger bars. Uh, you know, it's going to take more power, so there's a reduced power requirement on the chains. And also you run into the issue of where do the chips go once they've been cut. Having that space in between each cutter head, additional space, means you can fill that area up with more chips that get pulled out and out of the kerf. And so when you're looking at uh, skip or semi-skip, you're often talking about, you know, an MS-880 or a uh, Husqvarna 3120XP the uh, big, big saws. Putting a skip tooth on an 18 inch bar on a 40 cc engine is stupid. <clears throat> Poulan. All right, here we have uh, something of a specialty chain. This is a standard semi chisel, uh, low kickback, but it has carbide cutter heads. So this is uh, a steel chain, what they call their Duro line. With that carbide cutter tooth, you're going to get about four times the uh, sharpness out of the chain before you have to sharpen it. It's going to last quite a bit longer, especially useful in uh, real dirty situations or frozen woods. Uh, one of the downsides is that it is more expensive and also you can't sharpen this on your own without uh, special equipment. These have to be sharpened on a diamond grinding wheel. One of the comments in a, a different video mentioned that you can get a, a diamond tipped attachment for a Dremel and sharpen them like that. I do have a Dremel. I do not have a diamond abrasive attachment for it, but uh, something I'm going to look into because that would pretty be pretty sweet. All right, here we have a specialty chain. Not uh, that you need to know about it, but uh, you know I could get my hands on it, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Uh, this is a rescue chain. This chain is specifically for uh, firefighters and rescue personnel to go on the rescue saws. It is significantly heavier duty than uh, the other chains. You can see it is low kickback. It has a special hump on the uh, tie strap actually here, not on the drive link. These cutter teeth are uh, quite a bit thicker than your standard cutter teeth. They are also carbide. This chain will last quite a while before it needs to be sharpened. Also designed to go through uh, small amounts of metal and uh, other abrasives like concrete, cement, and whatnot. Um, so this chain is generally just super heavy duty so that if they do run into a nail or something like that, it doesn't dull the chain immediately but it'll go through it and allow the uh, rescue personnel to keep cutting, opening vents or whatever it is that they're doing, trying to access spaces. I'm gonna cover some of the tools that are handy to have around. This is just a uh, piece of plastic, really is all it is, but uh, you can take all kinds of measurements with this. I think they're like a dollar or two at treestuff.com. Each corner is a different thickness, so you can measure the gauge on the bar by sticking these in the bar. Also these slots are different widths, so you can stick your drive link in there and get the gauge of the chain. In addition, you have measurements on the top and bottom. So as kind of seen here, you can stick these on the outside of the rivets and get your pitch measurement. These holes are the diameter as described above. So you can stick your file, your round file in there to uh, figure out what size chain that that particular round file goes with. All right, without getting into how to sharpen 
Uh, I'll do that in a different video. These are three tools that you can use to sharpen round ground. This is your basic up here, simply a round file. Underneath here, we have my favorite. It is a round file simply with an attached gauge. So you can see it's just clamped right on there. This has the 30 degree line scribed in both sides so you can get your proper angle assuming you're doing a 30 degree chain and also the bottom plate of this gauge just runs right across the top of the cutter head so you can't file down too far and underneath we have one of the newer products uh, this is a steel branded though it's uh, not actually steel made i forget the name of the company who makes it but this is really a sharpener and also a depth gauge reducer in one you can see we have a sharpening file, round file here, another one on the other side, so you can flip it over. In between is a flat file that will take down the depth gauges at the same time. You simply run this across at the proper angle, and it will sharpen it and put the depth gauges at the right depth. I already showed this guy earlier in the video, but this is the bevel file for sharpening square ground chains that you'll probably never see. And here we have a, uh, the tools needed to take down depth gauges. So it's just a basic flat file and then a gauge. Uh, this is a multi-tool gauge, so it also has one end to uh, clean out the bar. And you can take a measurement on the bar depth with the line scribed in the side. You have angle measurements all along so you can get the uh, angles. And the important part is down here. That's what's going to set your depth. In addition, this is a different style. It does the same thing, but this is a .025 depth. So it sets it for that uh, deep. This is a .030. So this one sets it for a deeper depth, so you get uh, more of a bite. And to use these, you simply lay the tool across the top of the chain with the depth gauge sticking out the front. And if it needs to be taken down, you'll feel it rise up above these side plates. And you simply take your flat file and knock it down. This video is not comprehensive. There are other kinds of chain out there, but you're probably not gonna come across them. Harvester chain is used on uh, big machines. Scratcher chain is obsolete, not used at all anymore. That's going to be the uh, ones that you're going to see that are currently uh, in production and used in the industry. And of course, have a good one, humans.